Clear joy. What the heck does that mean? Sharon Hornosum here. Welcome to day 1,337 of what she up to now. Just documenting my journey as I transitioned from the brick and mortar corporate world of business to the online world of business. Spent uh, 48 years now having different businesses in my life. Started when I was 13, so you can do the math and figure out how old I am. <laughs> so simultaneously to having those businesses, I worked in corporate America for over a quarter century. And then I struck out on my own in a manufacturing business, had an Italian food manufacturing business for 35 of those years, and different businesses in different industries alongside the Italian food manufacturing business. So after I left corporate America and was focusing on the manufacturing business, I also was involved in other businesses. We had real estate, we had info product businesses, we had a lot of different businesses, all offline. Following my divorce in 2017, I decided that I was old enough that I could retire, but I didn't really want to. I figured I still had some things to learn for sure, but I could find some ways to, to be of value to the world and to try to continue to make the world a better place in the online world. Because I'd always been curious about it, just had never really jumped in and done anything. And I'm kind of ashamed to admit because I think it's, it's critical for everybody that has a business or even that's um, an employee that if you're just if you're an employee and working for someone else right now, I still think it's critical that you start to build your own career, your own personal brand, your own online presence so that you have the security of knowing that you're never going to fall prey to what happened in 2020 again and be SOL when your business shuts down or when your company that you're working for shuts down. You have another stream of income. You have another, another mechanism or another way of providing for yourself and, and those you love and care about. So it's interesting that, that prior to, to, and even it, prior to 2017, I was not online. I mean, dabbled very, very little uh, online, did a couple of little things, but nothing, pretty much had social media accounts. And that was about it. I think put, put a few things on eBay uh, with respect to the food business, did some things through my dad's website for the food business, but didn't even really have a website for the food business. I know it's hard to admit, but true. But I was, wasn't clear then. I, I wasn't clear. I didn't know what to do. I didn't have the time and energy because the way I had structured my businesses was I was way too involved in them. And so I've learned that that's not the way to go. I mean, in corporate America, one of the biggest things I missed by leaving corporate America was the automatic access to incredible resources in terms of human beings, resources in terms of money and things that we need to do the things we want to do, but especially the human resources and the expertise. So I had to recreate that on my own for my businesses. And now we're doing that again online. So today our idiom for supersize your business, we didn't really have an idiom. I talked about 11 or so different idioms that have to do with confusion because the opposite of clarity is confusion, at least in my mind. And if I, I we did clear as mud yesterday as the idiom and I talked about um, 10 different steps to getting clarity and then today I wanted to go over seven actually eight questions on that you ask yourself to get clear on what it is that you're doing what you want to create in your business that's our supersize your business page so we speak specifically to how does this tie to your business what does this mean for you as you're growing and building and supersizing your business so that was a good one and they're great questions to ask ourselves on a regular basis you know you don't just ask yourself these things once it's like asking yourself how do I feel today you don't just do it one day and then you're done for the rest of your life kind of like thinking you brush your teeth once and you don't have to ever brush your teeth again that would be just silly or you eat once so you never have to eat again no it doesn't work that way we have to do it every day a little bit every single day which is why I do the annual challenge is when I take something big that I want to accomplish or an area of my life that I want to work on, if I break it down and I do single daily actions, if I do one little thing every day, it's easy to achieve progress and make massive progress in that area or aspect of, my, of our lives, right? We can break it down. And any goal we have, we actually, if it's a big goal, we should be breaking it down into smaller pieces. And I find that the things that I can break down into, what is something I can do every day to move me toward that goal? Those are the ones that I start to achieve automatically. So for example, health, sleep, eating, um, consuming more water. If I do those things every day and I make it a, a daily habit, all of a sudden it's easy to make sure that I'm drinking enough water. It's easy to make sure that I'm eating right. It's easy to make sure that I'm exercising because I make it a part of my daily routine and I make it a habit. When we do something every day, 
we get addicted to it. Just like we can get addicted to bad things, we definitely can get addicted to good things. I am totally addicted to my morning routine and it changes periodically as my needs and, and the things I want to accomplish change. But I have had a morning routine, I don't know, well over a decade now because it serves me and it works for me and it gets me moving in the direction that I want to go and making progress. So even on a bad day, even on a day that I'm sick, I still make progress toward my long-term goals and objectives in various areas and aspects of my life. So it's fun. It's fun to do that. Uh, so our annual challenge is this year all about getting to know ourselves better, using the little mindfulness journey journal on our mindfulness journey for 2021, which it's been a good, a good topic because I think, I don't know about you all, but I was very discombobulated at the beginning of 2021. 2020, I, I had less struggles with than the beginning of 2021, which I find interesting on a personal analysis level because I thought that, hey, after the craziness of 2020, getting through that, 2021 would be a breeze. Yet, it seems like um, some of the energy and some of the negativity uh, is, and it's actually getting worse, right? It's getting worse. Things are getting, um, and, and those things we don't have to let affect us. And we do that by focusing on what's important to us, by doing a mindfulness journey of, and having a journal or having something that we do every day to keep us focused on what's really important to us, not on what is going on in the rest of the world. Because guess what? Bottom line, a lot of times what's going on in the rest of the world it, we really don't have to let it impact us or affect us negatively for sure. So today was all about the joy of action, the joy of doing something, which is right up my alley because I think there's no lack of knowledge or wisdom or information in the world. The day, these days of the internet have made information and knowing and finding out anything we want to know so easy everything it's at our fingertips anything we want to know we can ask google heck most of us have siri or something like that in our home and we can just ask not siri we can ask uh oh my gosh i can't remember her name i haven't been using mine obviously <laughs> we can just ask our home device listening all the time by the way a question and it will answer us i mean that is more than at our fingertips knowledge at our fingertips yet with all the knowledge and all the information, if we're not doing anything with it, if we're not acting, if we're not using that information to make us feel, help us to feel better or to make our life better and to make the world a better place, then what is the point of all of it, right? So that was our annual challenge today. And then uh, clarity, the eight questions for clarity. If you wanna know those questions, hit me up in the comments below and I will share them with you. Otherwise, uh, get up and go challenge. I changed the header on the group um, either the group or the page, I can't remember. I had some technical difficulties, which I do have sometimes given my vision challenges. But I will figure that out today. October 1st through 31st, we're doing the next Get Up and Go Challenge. And in that challenge, we talk about the SOAP framework and how we use the SOAP framework to automate and make dealing with changes and challenges automatic for us, as easy as breathing, because we, we take the SOAP framework, we learn the SOAP framework, we apply it to each area and aspect of our life, we install that process into our subconscious so it becomes as easy as breathing, and we're guaranteed to get the best possible results for us whenever we're faced with the change or challenge, whether it's a small change or challenge or a big change or challenge like COVID-19 was for the vast majority of people on the planet. All right, that's what I'm working on. Other projects, other things going on. Got some commitments today that I need to buzz off and get going. If I can help you in any way, please ask in the comments below or direct message me. Otherwise, go out, have an awesome day, and I will pop in again tomorrow and tell you what's going on.